Hey, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. All right, today we're gonna build that 48 volt battery and try and get that system back up and running. And just in case we don't, yeah, on the way to a nice charge today, so I will get coffee in the morning regardless. All right, a little winded. I've been hauling batteries from the shop down to the house. I just need to get a couple more things and we'll be good to go. So, all right, need some tools and the battery balancer. Okay, better throw that in there. Probably have to resort back to that. Cables and tools. Okay, I should be good to go. All right, four 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Gonna tie those together, make one 48 volt battery. Gonna yank this one out of there as it is dead. And since many of you mentioned put a voltmeter on, which I did do this, but I didn't show it on film, but let's take a quick look. Getting a 0.34. Yeah, that was with the battery off. Let's turn it on, see if there's any different kind of a reading. Just a teeny bit. 0.7879, bouncing around a little bit. That's with the battery in the on position. So yeah, once this is out of here and on another day, I'll take this up to the shop. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna go through that and see what, what we find. But for right now, let me start disconnecting everything real quick. And that's it right there. Everything is off. Panels are off, battery is off. Okay. Okay, cable's off, let's move this battery. All right, these are the four batteries we're gonna use. Red Odo couple of leap times and this cycling bat okay and we're going to call this number one number two number three and number four and that's important to remember that which battery is one through four to hook up the balancer in the right sequence and these batteries have all been sitting at rest for i want to say at least the past month i last had them tied in parallel to make the 400 amp hour bank. Uh, this one just read at 1323. That was a 1323. This one was like 13.8. And this was 13.6, I believe. But we're going to time together and let them become one. But before we put that balancer on, let's get them tied in series. Okay, batteries are all in series. Pause to neg. Pause to neg. Pause to neg. Now we're gonna hook up this balancer. We start on the number one position. I'm gonna hook up all of the positives first. Go from one, two, three, four, and then do the same thing on the negative leads. So yeah, that looks a little messy. Of course, it's a, uh, just the way I've got the batteries, but I can come in here and tighten those wires up. But let's just make sure I got number one, going to number one, number two, going to number two, number three to three, and number four to four, and same thing. There's four, three, <laughs> two right there. I gotta stop that. Yeah, two. Hard to see. Okay, so that's all hooked up correct. When I did hook it up the last one, it turned that light on automatically. So now I should have a 48 volt battery right there. Balancing, no less. Okay, let's do one last double check. We got neg to pause. Neg to pause, neg to pause. And that's gonna be number one, number two, number three, and number four. I've got the negative cable for this system already tied in. Now I'll energize that and we'll 
tie it up. And this is what I use. You know, one end on the cable, one end on the battery connector terminal, and uh, that keeps you from getting a spark. I always use one of those for my final connection. Okay, I should be good to go to start turning on everything and see where we're at. Okay, got the solar off as it should be. Of course, the MPPT is not on, but we should see that come on now. There we go. All right, <laughs> success. Success. Let me connect my other breaker here to the inverter. Should be good there. Uh, do I want to test the inverter first, do you think, before I turn on the solar panels and start getting these all balanced up with a full charge? Uh, let's look at the Victron app first. All right, let's see. We were calling it the 48 volt power queen. I'll have to rename that now. Let's get some values here. Okay, looks good. There we go. Voltage 53.48. Okay. I think we're good. Well, since we're doing process of elimination before I flip those panels on, let's just see how that inverter reacts to the new batteries. Oh, listen to that. Silence. Oh, silence. Yeah, doing just fine. Okay, uh, haven't seen that in a while. Let's slip on some solar now. Okay, it's not a lot of sun out there at the moment. 700 watt on that array out there, but it's pretty cloudy. Oh, and just out of sight, this thing kicked on. We'll have to reset that. It's not truly 100% full, but it's absolutely working. I'll find a place for that to live. There we go. Yeah, only about 10% of my panels are coming in right now. 100 watts or so, fast moving conditions, but pretty dark out there, but looking good. Okay, so inverter's running. Battery is balancing. That is now 148 volt battery. We've done this before in a different experiment uh, to show that it can be done. And here it is kind of a necessity to get my 48 volt system up and running to where, yeah, four 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphates tied in series. And then, you know, I added this after I built this originally in a previous video quite a while ago. And I was, you know, getting pretty close values between the, the batteries. But when I put the balancer on, I mean, they all were identical. So that's why I'm putting that on because I'm gonna ask a lot of this battery. You know, I run some high powered stuff, coffee maker, you know, like I mentioned, George Foreman grill, things like that. They pull some power. So I wanna keep those cells balanced. So there we go. Now, oh, sun peeking, trying to peek through. There we go. And let's just, oops. Let's just see what my battery is being set for. I want to go ahead and there's, that's what I wanted. I want absorption 56.8 and float at 54, which is the standard smart lithium, lithium iron phosphate setting on this app or the, Blute, the Bluetooth for the charge controller. So yeah, those are the values I want to go with which I could never get that power queen to work with those parameters. And there we go. Sun peeking through a little bit better. Okay, guys, that didn't take me too terribly long. The hardest part was carrying these from the shop down to the house. Other than that, went together pretty good. Now I'll spend a little more time tidying up these lines. There's no real good tight way to make those lines because they go all over the place the way that these batteries are in configuration now, but I'm gonna make that work absolutely fine. Oh, there we go. Yeah, cranking right up. So maybe I'll be lucky and get these up to a nice full charge today. 
but the inverter is not making noise and at 55 volts this thing started screaming and for how long matt how long <laughs> did i think it was this and you kept saying no it's that power queen dude and uh yeah it looks like it was so that's where it lives at the moment we're going to tear that apart and see if we can't figure out what truly happened with that but it's been pointed out to me for quite some time that that was the problem oh it's so nice when everything works like it's supposed to <laughs> all right now if this battery so happens to get up to an actual you know float charge today or very very close to it i'll go ahead and press that right button down there to tell it that it is truly now a hundred percent fully charged battery but anytime you start over uh you, you have to do that get it up to a full charge and tell that that was a hundred percent full so yeah and there we can see i'm starting to catch a little bit of a line in today's graph <laughs> And see, there was that minimum from this morning that it showed 0.21 volt uh, yesterday, 0.144. And then there's the day it must have happened, you know, three days ago. Even though I got up to what was supposedly a full charge, it caught a 3.0 volt. So there we go. Looking good. Very happy. Very happy with that. Hey, and look at that. It just a few minutes later clicked over into absorption, reaching the target voltage when it had a little bit more solar coming in of 56.8 volts. So it was 200 and some watts. If it goes back up there, you'll see it'll creep right back up there and hold it there for two hours and then kick over into float. So. I'm going to just go ahead and just for right now call that 100% full. And if it, anything changes wildly, I can always reset it, but I'm pretty happy with that. I call that a full battery now. So it's kind of early in the afternoon. Well, well, not so early, about 2.30. So uh, it may go all the way to float today, but yeah. Pretty good. So happy. So happy my brain's working again. <laughs> All right, several hours later, made it to float, as you can see, by the green light on the charge controller. Everything is going good. Take a look at the app. Only 11 watts coming in right now to hold it at 54 volts, which is exactly where I have float set to. Everything looking good. I have been using this inverter, I've left it on the whole time. <laughs> no weird noises. Uh, have ground tomorrow's coffee already. And the big test will be uh, going to throw the George Foreman grill on it here in a minute. Absolutely perfect. All right, so here's where we're going to put it to a test. Coffee's ready for the morning. But tonight, George Foreman Grill, got it in the watt meter. Let's turn it on. Start preheating this thing. 1200 and some watts. Everything working silently here at the moment. The fan will probably kick on here pretty quick. Quickly drawing power down, as you can see that arrow pointing down. This will go down pretty quick, drawing that amount of uh, power. And now the fan's running, still pulling about 1,200 and some watts. Preheating, 97.8% full. Everything's working good. Okay, it's all preheated. Whew. Here we go. Back in action. 
still pulling 1207 watts. Fan is running as is normal. Let's check for some. Cables are completely cool. No warmth whatsoever. Absolutely cruising along. And there's the end result. I cooked five burgers, got dinner for tonight and beyond. Let those last two cool off. And to cook all of that, two different rounds from 100% full down to 93.2%. So plenty enough for coffee in the morning and that's about it that this system will see tonight. It was a good day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a heck of a lot of fun to put it together. Only needed a 13 millimeter wrench to do that whole project. That was it. All right. Good evening, everybody, and aloha.